as we cover many an insane movie and numerous cult TV phenomena. Are you ready to get jacked up? Are you with us? Then listen on. Unfortunately, they were not able to uh, revive the subject that he was pronounced deceased here at the location. See me, I always wanna win. Always win? These bitches, they really not my friends. Not my friends. See me, I always wanna win. Always win. These bitches, they really not my friends. They're not my friends. See me, I always wanna win. We always win. These bitches, they really not my friends. They're not my friends. See me, I always wanna win. We always winning. Always winning. See me. I always wanna win. Always win. These bitches, they really not my friends. They not my friends. They plotting, they just wanna get ahead. Get ahead. Keep shooting till you lay a nigga dead. Lay a dead. Keep fighting till you stump a nigga head. Stump his head. These bullets travel faster, so watch your step. Watch your step. See me, I always wanna win. Always win. These bitches, they really not my friends. They not my friends. I always wanna win, always calling shots. I call shot. a shot. Somebody tell him I got the best. I got my cut. Oh mama, I just shot a just shot man down right in front of his damn five and his father. Who shot you? Don't make me remind you. We I'll hopped in and out of forms, motherfuckers are still walking. Still walk. Real humble, a bitch been through the struggle. All they talking money, me but in person they gon' stutter. With a fight them bitches that's already gon' suffer. Real Eat a rap bitch up like she was the last supper. So last cold time. with my pink game, I dare any wanna touch bitches it. Let touch the it. weed burn, but bitch I'm no usher. Have them singing. All my songs in the stands, just like a fan. You Call a me fan. rubber band, Mia. The way I make money dance. Money dance. Shaking his ass on his lap, make his dick stand. His dick stand. Like a kickstand. See me, I always wanna win. Always winning. These bitches, they really not my friends. They not my friends. They fighting, they just wanna get ahead. Get ahead. Keep shooting till you lay a nigga dead. Lay him dead. Keep fighting till you stump a nigga head. Stomp his head. These bullets travel faster. So watch your step. Watch your step. See me, I always wanna win. Always winning. See me. I always wanna win. We always win. I'm trying to make the money, stack it up and flip it though. I got a million bucks, she never let me go. Swerving in the lanes, coughing up my lungs and smoking dope. Smoke chopper on the beat, I gotta let these bitches know. Don't be playing with my emotions, I'm just trying to flow. I could do this shit for real, she be riding poles. Everywhere we go, yeah, we gotta keep the hoes. They be in the back every night, counting on my dough. I don't listen to bitches, I be kicking in those. One more time up in this shit, yeah, they know I'm a foldier. I can do this shit for real, one more time I'm a soldier. I be lying in this bitch. When I said it's all over She be liking where I come from Cause she know I'm a holder I don't play about my money I can do it all over I can do it all over Welcome, welcome ladies and gents Once again, Moneybag Mia and I are both here today And we're just gonna just jump into Just a lot of ungrateful types Who are plaguing the industry Yes uh... in the industry <laughs> Hello everyone, it's Moneybag Mia, and I wanted to talk about independent women, independent artists, and just people that are in the industry and they're like working really hard to get to where they are and they're building their craft and you know how sometimes we either get taken advantage of or we're not getting enough credit for the hard work that we are doing. And I know being independent, you know, we say that we don't want validation as women or as men or as artists or influencers or industry people, but in a way we do because it's like when you work really hard for something, you want someone to at least recognize your value and be like, okay, I'm going to put my time or my money or my effort behind this person because 
they already have their own establishment going, but it seems like things are hard for us. We face more adversities than we do, um, you know, opportunities because some people are intimidated by the independency of people in the industry because they feel like, oh, well, you have to have these certain connections. You have to build these bonds, but sometimes when you're smart and you just know how to use your intellectual, you know, mind and your words and just, you know, looking things up and researching and kind of figuring things out on your own, you start to realize that the same things that you could be learning from people, you can teach yourself as well. And some people don't have like that resilience to be independent because it's easier to just work under someone instead of building your own brand. And just coasting through and just acting like, oh, you know, I'm the main head of it all. I got it all figured out. This is like strictly told everything. It's collaboration and no fair getting mad when people call you out for just not crediting, you know. And Stephen, just going for the proper channels, you know. It's just, it really is amazing how we can sign all the paperwork and everything and something like this still comes out where someone just has to act like they did it all and everyone else is below them, you know, and it's like, we don't see any, you know, music remixers or, you know, cameraman or, you know, craft services complain if they don't get a proper credit, you know, it's just kind of, but at the same time, I mean, I'm sure they would like a credit. It, it seems like, I don't know. It's like, everyone wants to give like five different credits and that's it. Like no one else deserves any benefit of the doubt or any acclaim or any, just, just a simple, just applause. Like, thank you for keeping this machine, you know, just up and running. And yes, I definitely see it with gender, maybe even certain races. Like I've seen certain, people kind of not want to credit certain people certain ways like the white person has to be first on a billboard and the black person has to be like third build <laughs> it's just like that's still going on and i'm like why is this still going on <laughs> that's very true um there's like a lot of colorism that plays into it you know but what i'm trying to get at is that independent people whether you're an artist or a mother or just a woman a working woman I feel like um, when you have a business or you have a craft, I feel like you should be properly credited for it. You shouldn't be categorized in a certain racial profile or a certain skill set profile. Like, well, this person does this better. You know, there's people that start businesses that have only been up and running for two years that could be a better business than someone that's been open for five years just because of the different marketing tactics or, you know, the different promoting or you know, just the different mindsets. Everyone has different mindsets of things. And I feel like, you know, when it comes to small businesses, I really don't like when people try to downplay independent businesses because it's like, you know, yeah, they're independent, but they work hard to get to where they are. So I feel like when people like try to, you know, use independent businesses for like free merchandise or free service or free information, I feel like when you put your money behind something, you shouldn't really be doing anything for free. I feel like people should support a small business just like they would support any other business. You have to pay for products. And I feel like that happens a lot with businesses that I see today. And it, it's kind of sort of like people try to do that with me. Like they try to get like free product. And then it's like, there's nothing wrong with free promotion. I'm not saying like, don't send out free products here and there, but do it on your terms. You know what I mean? Like, don't over give yourself to people that wouldn't give themselves to you, you know? And it's like, sometimes people just want the product just to have it. Like they don't want to promote, they don't want to shout you out or, you know, they just kind of do things on their terms. And then they just kind of want to like, you know, stunt on people who are, you know, making a way. And then, you know, and then they act like you owe them something when they basically shat on your talent or, Essentially, they used your services, but again, they still didn't properly credit you. That's very true. Or, or this is like, it's not like it costs them any more money to just say, hey, you know, I'm, <laughs> it, even if it's like a 400 for the day kind of deal or whatever fee is worked out, it's like, 
give them five different credits. You know, what, whatever they did, that's what they did, you know? And it seems like people are just lazy and they don't like to, again, give credit where it's due. And playing into where you went with that, I, I, I definitely think uh, investors fall victim to this because anyone can claim, I got an idea, when it's just a hustle to just get some instant money and not necessarily have to pay it back. It's a free loan, basically, is what they're using it as. <laughs> it's like, no, uh I mean, word gets around that you cheated people of money, you know, they'll, they'll find ways to kill your career and get their vengeance. And again, have some honor. That's very true. Your word is everything. You break it, you're done. That's, that's very true, and that's why businesses are really like um, tedious about who they work with because there's a lot of scammers. There's a lot of people that just goes around trying to get free merchandise from different businesses, you know, just to have it. And then it's like sometimes there will be people that will receive product and then act like they didn't get it or act like they lost it, so you can send them more product. It's like it's like a, a, a game that they play to try and make a, a business person feel like they have to try harder to appease someone, you know, because they feel like, well, this is a small business. They're not going to care. They're not popping. They're not this. They're not that. But it's like small businesses actually spend so much money on getting their business out there. We put more money into the brand than we do into actually making sales. So when someone gets like multiple things for free, it's kind of like taking away from the whole point of starting a business to make money. So it's like you can't expect someone to give you free things when people are actually buying product from this business and is actually getting praise from this business and is actually doing well with well with the business because it's like now you're just trying to discredit something that's already, you know, elevating. Mm-hmm. And you got to love the people you're working with. And if they're constantly just playing games with you and just, again, ripping you off in some way. It's like, yeah, it's like, guys, you know, it's going to be a very, very long session for having to. Yeah. And it's like, even in the music industry, like when you're independent, like, it's like the thing about it is having a manager is just kind of like the same as being independent because it's like, me personally, with my music, I really like to do a lot of things my way. So it's really hard for me to kind of like be managed by someone who that feels, okay, I'm going to take control of this, that, 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 this. I like to do things my way. I like to work freely with people. I like to put out the music mm -hmm. I put out. I like to do things my own way, not what's popular, not what's trending. I've just never been that type of person that wanted to always be a part of that that in crowd. I like to stand out. I like to do things different. I don't want to do something that everybody has already done and that's trending because once it's trending, you know, trends eventually die out. So people are looking for something new, something that people haven't heard or haven't saw. And I want to be able to bring that to the hip hop industry because it's like you see a lot of the same things, just different artists. So to me, that's boring. I like to do things totally. different. I like to promote differently. I like to market my music differently. I just, you know, I like to have a little bit of class about myself because, you know, once you start putting out a certain image, it's like people can't unsee that vision of you. And it just brings a lot of attention from people that derails your, your career and your character as an artist and a businesswoman. So you have to really oh, absolutely yourself as a woman nowadays because there's so much sexual content online that people can mistake what you're promoting for other things so it's just yeah. it's better to be safe than sorry especially in the industry because there's a lot of guys that just want to see women get naked on a video shoot or you know rap about something sexual so they can try and pursue you and it's like it's okay to rap about sex but it's not okay when men try to use what women rap about as a way to scheme them into the bedroom or scheme them into false opportunities that they're trying to offer. When you're exactly. serious career and about what you do, you don't allow people to take advantage of you. Well, and that's just it. And somewhere along the way, everyone just thinks, hey, you know, might as well get laid from this. I'm like, or how about just have pride in your work? You know, <laughs> you can have an actual relationship. 
or That's very consens true. consensual affair. But yeah, it, it's very annoying how I, I take a lot of these as the equivalent of these are the same kind of jerks who were, you know, che looking over your shoulder, cheating on a test, or better yet, you know, and when it, when it gets to be a collaboration and one's taking, you know, uh, credit for what everyone else is doing, it can definitely be the equivalent of when you're giving a high school or college class presentation, you know, when they put you into groups and almost always the fourth person doesn't do anything <laughs> and one or two That's people true. pull everything and third person either does something but their contributions aren't taken or slacks a bit and just makes it look good or you know, they have a talking piece, but they're not organized or they're hell to work with. And yeah, it was like, it, it's just hard working in groups with people. And I really do wish there was a better way to vet them instead of just, oh, they got all this equipment. It's like, again, do they know how to use it? And are the people, exactly. persons, you know, and I get that it's not always easy. There's plenty of people who have talent, but have no social skills. So you hear stories all the time, like how sports players miss mandatory training and prep or you even hear it with yeah music artists how a lot of them have to stroll out of the studio and clear their mind take a walk and the record producer is like i gotta get something in the can <laughs> uh it's it, i think also just so many people they get famous uh, way too early or they get some kind of reputation and then they feel like they can work in some other kind of immature shit and it's just like okay well no it's never okay <laughs> don't be late to a meeting don't yeah i don't agree with that else. i also feel like um when you're independent and you're in the music industry it's like people expect you to be thinking less of yourself so they think that you're desperate for opportunities or they think that you're desperate for certain things so they kind of approach you differently like like oh hey like if you do this then you know you'll get that in return like I've dealt with some really shady people like I went to the studio to work with this producer and like you know we sat there and made a lot of music and you know I didn't even get the credit for the music and then he didn't put out what? any of the songs he didn't put out not one of the songs that I did with him. Um, and it was just like, it was really weird because it's like he was doing that to a lot of other women as well that worked with him previously. And I didn't think anything of it because, you know, when I first worked with him initially, like I gave him the benefit of the doubt. But yes, yeah, like we were in the studio for like two days, you know, I invited my friends and stuff. And it just kind of turned into some like, party thing instead of like business and it's like one thing that I don't play about is my music like you know if you tell me hey we have this studio time we're gonna do this project we're gonna get this done we're gonna put this out that's what I expect you know so it's Probably. like sometimes things are just trial and error like you work with people you figure out who they are you don't work with them again um you just have to be wise you know there's gonna be ups and downs in the industry you're not gonna always find someone that you really like in the business or that you have a great work relationship with, but it's all like a learning process and, you know, it's a mind mechanism thing that you build for yourself. So you're like, okay, well, this is the steps that I need to take to get myself here and there. Like even when I started my business, like I had to isolate myself from a lot of people who discouraged me from what I had going on or try to, you know, derail me from what my initial plan and goal was because it wasn't something that people can see going really far right away so it's like sometimes when you're on a mission and you're trying to be independent and you are independent and you know for a fact that you can get these things done by yourself without all of these opportunities like there's people that feel like they have to be around famous people to get ahead and you don't have to be around famous people to get ahead you just have to use your mind and think and build your platform like I literally been building my platform since I was 18 years old I didn't have any help I didn't really work with anybody famous you know I did one um event with Black Heat Crew in 2019 where that was like a, a famous tattoo shop but like that was the only thing that I did that involved like a celebrity status type of thing but everything that I've built for myself I did on my own I did the talking up on my phone all night 
all day booking myself photo shoots. Like I never had a manager until late 2020. So it was like, I'm so used to doing everything for myself. So when I feel like someone is trying to take what I have and minute it to something small, I get very upset, you know, because it's like I worked really hard for this. And it gets even more offensive when they're just so oblivious to what they've done. And yeah, the worst thing, again, you just can't get time away. And sometimes it's even worse than losing money. This is like, okay, at least I learned from how I spent money or someone took me advantage of. And at least, you know, I got to report them as being a fraud or whatever or a hack. And, but yeah, when they flat out taking your time and, Again, yeah, like you say, they you give someone material and they just don't even acknowledge that you're coming in every day, you're driving, you're you know, using a studio, you're using a bunch of material and no one even heard your voice and or like you even mentioned later there how they say no to your idea and you don't know if it was just they were going to, you know, not listen to any opinion anyway, or if they really were that narrow-minded, they just couldn't get behind the concept. And it's just really aggravating because it forces one to look in the mirror and say, did I just not say it right? Did I just need to tweak it a little bit with the wording? What, 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 why did they reject that idea? And sometimes it's like, well, it didn't matter how I, what I said it. They still would have said no. And But right. it, it takes a while for one to learn it. It's yeah. like you say, trial and error. and then after a dozen more meetings or scenarios where you interact, it's just like, yeah, no, <laughs> I'm just not working with this person <laughs> or these kind of people. <sighs> it's, it's, yeah. really... it's really difficult because it's like when you're trying to do something, you're trying to involve people, you're trying to get the community involved, you want to get your friends involved, you know, you just want to kind of be happy about what you're doing and share that success with people. But like you said, just being narrow minded or even being jealous of someone being successful, like, because it's like, you know, I planned on starting a business, you know, with my friends or my family, but I end up having to do it by myself because I just felt like the effort and the, the money I invested into it, I felt like people were not on board with you know, investing or, you know, taking the time out to sit and do the things that need to be done. And I'm just not a lazy person. You know, when I set my mind to something and I say I'm going to do something, it's just done, you know. And I feel like my motivation has been a lot of things that I've just been going through throughout my whole entire life of always being told I couldn't do something or just always feeling belittled, just feeling like you know, stuck in a place where I felt like I can never, like, reach my full potential because I feel like my whole entire life I've always been, like, put down or forgot about or left behind. So I, I always wanted to build a legacy where I wouldn't forget about myself. I wouldn't be rid of myself. I'm only going to uplift myself and, and push myself to my full potential. So when people saw me doing something like that, it was like they didn't think that I would be able to get up out of that space in that mind where, okay, I can do it, and I just have to stop listening to the negative things that people say. Absolutely. And they, it's tough to factor it all in, because it's like, you got to pretty much keep forcing yourself to just breathe and just, you know, not take it personally, but it feels so personal, even though, you know, again, you can't waste time, especially on someone who's just so dumb and doesn't, understand you and like you say even when you got the support sometimes it's not the right kind of support and that's even more aggravating you know it's not like something we they teach us in college where hey you know you want to use friends you want to use family in this no you're on your own you know <laughs> just use you and find you know you will eventually find the right kind of outsider the right kind of peer who you get along with and you want to incorporate whatever vision it is, whether it's personal or career based or what have you. And like you say, it, it's, it, it does take a while to realize something is being a waste of time. And it's, it's just also just annoying to fall into the same loop where it's like, man, I thought I was better at this at reading that guy. 
reading this yeah chapter. that's Ooh. really true yeah <laughs> sometimes you just make the same mistakes over and over again you know it's like you try to see the good in people but it's like once a person just shows you who they are you just have to believe them like when you try and go back and forth with the energy that you feel is presented to you that you know it isn't favorable to your liking it's hard to go back and revisit that energy because it's like, okay, I already know what was presented. So why am I going back? But it's the point of your spirit being led to doing something good for someone that's ungrateful or doing something good, you know, for a cause. And you just want to involve someone just to be like, Hey, you know, I just want to involve that person, but everybody is not willing to get involved in those things because they feel like, either this person being independent is going to be intimidating for me because I haven't reached that point in my life yet, or this person is going to be successful and I'm going to eventually get jealous. So if I start working with this person, I'm going to, you know, do everything I can to sabotage it. So I'm just going to like stay away or I'm going to do right. this stuff here and there to make them want to push themselves away from me. Oh, it's, you see a lot of that in the corporate media too, when you know someone will send someone of a different political side to like go and interview someone, and definitely happens with products as well. Like, I'm surprised what ads get away with what they say. Like, now I see it especially in cleaning uh, tool ads a lot. Cleans more bacteria than this product or that product, and especially the computer ones. Like, mm, has more memory than this or that, and like, hmm not sure about that and that sounds like an attack as opposed to a comparison you know yeah that's true a lot of those propaganda <laughs> commercials where they compare different you know restaurants or different products to others it do seem like it's just attacking it's not more like of a friendly competition it's it's kind of more like okay you're gonna work with me and only me and then this company you're not but that just gives the other company promotion like okay like i want to like go to this this place or I want to shop at that store or I want to buy that product because you said that they were no good and because now we're the bad boys oh we have this infamy to us now that intrigues people even more if you're infamous for whatever yeah, reason that's really true. like when you down talk people that just makes people want to see what they're about so it's like you know even <laughs> if someone is belittling you or talking down on your name or your business like that's just going to make more people want to see for themselves if that's really what it is you know so you're basically mm -hmm. trafficking business their way regardless right they're wasting your time and your money and this is like i can't help it now i want to know why what they're about because yeah they're so ego-headed and i want to understand what makes them tick because i just some people are just idiots you can't take your eyes off of um but yeah, no, uh, it's so true. When you're in a project and you realize it's garbage, it's so hard to like tell people, hey, man, it's not me without it getting back to someone and them using that against you. Oh, well, I'll make sure to tell everyone else that. I'm like, well, no, seriously, you damaged my vision. You, <laughs> uh, I, My name is in a project, which I've disowned because it's garbage. And I've just suffered a lot of that as an, an independent and amateur film productions. It just got to where I was just like, yeah, no, I'm not happy with anything I've done for the most part. <laughs> I'm just like, I just got to take a step back and, you know, work on something that does have some professional people to it where, you know, because like you say, the minute people start shit talking and just are too proud with their vision and just re-edit so many things in such a way to where it's just like, yeah, no, I really had nothing to do with it. <laughs> really hate how it's that title is the first thing that's popping up on imdb <laughs> yeah that's true you know there's there's just so much being independent there's so much like roadblocks and adversities to being independent like it's a beautiful thing to be independent but then you have to deal with everybody else that is not independent and that have people under their belt like oh well i have this help and i have that support so I don't have to work as hard as you do. It's like a comparison between uh, codependency, dependency, and independency when really you can't compare any of those things to each other because there's just people that work hard for what they want and then there's people that get by in life by working hard for other people and then there's people that get by in life just riding off someone's coattail. It's like if you feel like you have to go chase opportunities, um, 
and work with somebody who has a bigger platform than you to get some sort of clout or fame that just goes to show that you don't have your own mind to build yourself it's like those are what I like to call clout chasers like when you just chase clout or you chase fame you're not getting paid for it it's like it's more of like a promotion thing like you're just getting seen but you're not really getting paid for it it's like you're just doing it for you know Instagram likes and views and popularity so then it becomes meaningless to even go that route cloud chasers are just people that do things for you know the hell of it like it's not like a true passion you're not investing any money into it you're just getting a free ride off of someone else's platform and i don't think that's fair it really isn't and i used to get so pissed when i would see talented people working for a bunch of guys who were so full of themselves uh, and I was just like, well, those people aren't who are following this guy aren't necessarily dumb like him, and I'm not. I don't want to pair them all together because that's not fair. But at the same time, it's just like, well, if you tried to work out with all these people, and for whatever reason, they're speaking, they're still just taking this ego-headed guy's, you know, project over your project. You just have to just let it go and just say, you know, if that, it, and when they come to you, when they see you in a project and now they want to work with you, that's where you just say, no, sorry, you missed the boat or okay. But now, you know, it's bigger price on it. I'm going to expect a lot of this out of you. <laughs> you know. And I, I can't stand the ones who just, you meant nothing to me, but now, oh, now that I saw what you can do, oh, now you mean something to me. I'm just like, I can't think of someone that way. I want to give everyone the benefit of the doubt and exactly the minute we hit a barrier in the road the minute we hit a you know a manhole or just something that's just you know a pothole or you know just broken luggage or something that has just torn this all apart that's when you just say hey you know nothing personal but we're we're just not clicking <laughs> have you you've been in a few music videos i think you've said yes, are there any that you've been proud of or have a lot of them been just a little underwhelming because the photographers or directors weren't working very well? Um, I had a few great video shoots, actually. It was one video shoot that I had where I felt like um, the videographer was, like, really, like, weird to me. Like, it just seemed like he was kind of trying to compare me and the other model to each other and I, I didn't really care for that but, yeah don't be playful but, especially yeah, when other, it's the, not the director's call you know yeah but other than that I felt like it went really well but I feel like you know the artist and the director of the video kind of had similar like um things in common when it came to certain things it's like he really was trying to do things his way, but then his videographer was, like, trying to take over his video shoot, and then, like, I've never heard of anybody behind the camera wanting to get in the actual video, like, he wanted to be in the video really bad, like, really? Wanted, yeah, he wanted to have a small cameo in the video, I thought that was really weird. I did a like, cameo like, on my music video, but that was after the fact, that was never yeah, planned. It, it, was, it wasn't even his video, it was his artist video, and it was, like, he was trying to cut scenes with me and the other model just to get his face in the film. And it was like, he didn't want me to do certain scenes with him that the artist wanted me to do. But it's like, it was his director. So he kind of had to follow his director's lead. But I feel like, you know, directors shouldn't demand their artists. Uh, the artist should be able to take creative control of how they want their videos to be shot. And that's exactly why I don't like falling under management because you don't have your own creative content. It's like everything is what they feel is appropriate financially and what they feel will make them money. They're just money hungry people. That's why I feel like being independent is so important because you get to control your own content. You have your own creative content. And it's like there's rarely a manager that you can find that cares about your creative control and your creative content and how you want things to be like. You know, there's a lot of different things that, you know, I want for my career that someone else may not want for my career or someone else doesn't see fit. And that's where 
I clash with people like, okay, I don't want things done like that. I want things done like this. But sometimes as an artist, you kind of have to be like, okay, well, when you're not in the position to do those things for yourself, you kind of have to follow someone else's lead because they are putting that budget behind you. But at the same point in time, I still feel like the artist should be able to have that creative control, have that voice, be able to speak up and kind of control and narrate what they want for their videos and for their music and their talent because they're the ones that have to put in the work. The managers are just on the receiving end of the stick, receiving the game from the artist's effort. You know, yeah, managers do their part, but they're really working for us. Essentially, I think you could easily say a lot of the ones who are doing the work feel like they're smarter than the other person or they must just have way more control and that gets annoying because it's just like uh it, it's there's just no need you know <laughs> and yeah. it, it also just gets annoying in that like you say uh it, you kind of get a lot of red lights where uh just red alerts where you just see that you know unless you got everything figured out up front there's always going to be someone who feels like they can misinterpret it so to speak <laughs> yeah you know I'm actually so resilient with myself like I know I'm not as far as I want to go but I'm a little bit closer than where I was when I was 18 years old and I also feel like you know one day I'm going to have all of my own everything. Like I'm going to own my own business, my own photography studio, my own restaurant. I'm not going to ever be under anybody's platform. I'm going to be famous and I'm going to be rich and people are going to work with me. Like I don't want to have to feel like I have to reach out to famous people and, you know, put myself in situations where I'm desperate and going on my way to be around the likings of someone because I just know that, it's not really always cracked up to be being on famous people and being on their platform because sometimes their platform is not really the type of platform I want to be on. I just, I've always been the type of person where I want to do things my way. I've never wanted to cloud chase to, like, there's nobody in this world that I want to work with that bad that I would go out to an extent or a limb to make happen. I feel like people will naturally come to me when they see my potential. I'm not going to force myself to see, for anyone to see my potential because I know what I'm capable of. So if you just don't see it, you don't see it. I'm not desperate. I have my own everything. I'm not willing to lower my standards or lower my image or change anything about myself to be around someone. No, but just, you can only promote yourself before it's like, okay, I've said all I'm going to say and you chose to not listen or you don't. I'm not who you're looking for. Okay, moving on. Yeah. I just want to be like seen in a different way. You know, I've promoted myself in so many different ways. I've went viral for a lot of different things. So now I'm just at a point in my life where it's like, okay, I want to change the narrative of how I promote myself. Like, you know, I did my modeling. You know, I did OnlyFans. I did, you know, my swimwear business. I did my t-shirt line. Like, I've, I've done a lot of different things. You know, I rap. I do, I do video vixing, like, I've done a lot of different things, you know, I'm just, like, trying to do more, and then, you know, I had my babies, you know, I got pregnant again for the second time, I had my daughter last year, so now, I literally have to promote myself differently than what I was doing, like, five, six years ago. Yeah. It's even harder when we have a lot of tools for, like, you know, just about anyone can have a LinkedIn and whatever profile but then it's just like well you can't let them do the work regardless of whether you got a you know free account or premium account you still got to do a lot of extra promotion in addition to that yeah you know I feel like I focus more on the entrepreneur side of things because I don't have to do too much um, of the footwork I can just like I got my website finally which is really amazing so I'm happy I finally created my own website. I've made my own website before, but I just was going through so much postpartum and I just was taking care of my daughter. And I was like, you know what, while well, I got this time and I'm in the right headspace, let me go ahead and just make this website. 
so mm-hmm. it would be a little bit more easier on me. So I, you know, I made my website. I started writing the book. You know, I just I find other ways where I don't have to sexualize myself to make money because you know I just realized you know now that I'm a mother, like I don't want my daughter to see me, my daughters to see me, you know, promoting myself in a way that I wouldn't want them to promote themselves when they get older. So I'm just being the example that I want my children to see and I'm moving completely different than where I was like you know I used to be really out there like you know and I I changed a lot for myself you know when I got married it was like I had to become this you know wife and this mother and this like perfect person but I wasn't really in that place when I first got married so it took a lot for me to get to that place but once I got there I realized it was more peaceful and and it was more freedom to be that person than it was to just be all over the place so I'm grateful for my husband and my children and um I just see things differently you know my career is actually doing better and my business is doing good so you know now I'm just like okay now what's next for me I really took a liking to my cosmetic brand I didn't even really realize how much I was into makeup and you know beauty and all this other stuff because you know with my model and of course like that was a way for me to express my beauty but I never was like really heavily like into makeup I've always been addicted to like lip gloss and eyelashes but I wasn't into it that much and then when I started my business I started making the lip glosses and I realized I like making lip glosses a lot and once I found like a habit and a, ho- a hobby it, at first it was a hobby just making the lip glosses you know just to see if I knew how to make them and then I started making money and I was like, okay, this is now a business. <laughs> so totally. it, was, it was like everything just kind of fell into place. That was, that's my niche, you know, cosmetics, makeup, that's my niche, you know, and that was something that people didn't really see that for me. Like, okay, they didn't really see me as to be into makeup because I was always into like rapping and modeling. But when I switched over to makeup, it was like, a lot of people that I do or just people that I saw that were into makeup, like, okay, she's still in my idea. Like, what is this? I just, I don't know. It wasn't like I stole anybody's idea. I just realized, like, I'm not selling makeup palettes and I'm not over here doing makeup tutorials. I'm just doing lip gloss and lashes, you know? And I felt like that was something that was up my alley. But I do want to start my own face care line. I want to start a vegan face care line. I want to name it after my uh, my two daughters, and um, it's going to be like a healthy face skin cream for people of all like skin types and all different ethnicities. And it's going to be um, it's going to be vegan, you know, so it's like no cruelty to your skin because a lot of different face care products have different uh, ingredients in it that is very harmful to your skin. And if you have sensitive skin like me. And those products would be perfect for you. So I was thinking about doing a face care line. And then I was also like thinking about, you know, expanding to, you know, foundation and concealer. And, um, you know, it's like this cream for people with wrinkles and stuff. I was thinking about doing stuff like that. And that was also going to be a uh, vegan as well. And, you know, natural base. So it's a lot of things that have come in the works. I just been you know, trying to properly plan things out and just kind of stick to one thing. Like if I'm gonna do lip gloss and lashes, I might as well just go full blown into the cosmetics and then I'm gonna do my clothing on the side. So I just, I have a lot of projects that I'm trying to get done. You know, it's been really hard, you know, with the baby and all, but I feel like I've been doing a tremendous job at juggling my career and my family life. And a lot of people don't know how to do that. They don't know how to, have a career and juggle having a small child at home or, you know, still kind of focus on themselves while taking care of a child. It's actually a lot of people tell me, you know, what I'm doing is very courageous because a lot of people could not be doing that, you know, six months pregnant or, you know, starting a business pregnant and, you know, having a child and still constantly going and going and going. But that's just who I am. It really is hard, though, to tell certain people is like, okay, this is how what we do. I don't recommend you do that mistake because I've done it a few different times and almost all the time. Everyone just, they can't help themselves. They think they're smarter than the average bear. <laughs> and Like you say, it if you're going to, it is hard to really tell, hey, I, 
I don't want anyone to see, you know, this version of me or that version, but you know, I can't, you know, I can only help what I can help. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like when you are really motivated to do something, I feel like my daughter was my motivation. Like when I got pregnant with Tini Saleya, I feel like I was unstoppable. Like I could do anything in the world, you know? And then after I had her, I was like, okay, now I have to slow down because I don't think I can do it all. But like when I was pregnant with her, I was doing so much, so much. And, you know, I realized I, I took a, a lot of a toll on myself, you know? So I had to give myself like time. But I feel like when I was ready to do things, I did them, you know? And I feel like, you know, with my music career, I feel like my music career has always been a little stagnant. And I feel like I always had to put my own effort into my music. Like, I just, I'm the type of person, I want things done on my time. And if it's not done on my time, it's easy for me to forget about it and forget about that person. Like, I feel like you have to be ready when I'm ready. I don't like working on other people's schedule. Like, people will say that I'm very bossy, I'm very demanding, and I'm a bitch, but... I just feel like when it's about me, it needs, everything has to just stop and it needs to be about me. I don't want to feel like I'm, you know, going through hoops and hurdles to get someone to do something for me that should already be being done for me because you work for me. That's why I work for myself because once I hire people, I got to fire people because they're not on my time, they're not on my schedule, and they're not on what I need done for me. And it's like, I just I just think that things should happen in a snap of a finger. Like, if I'm able to start a business while I'm pregnant, I should be able to be in the studio just as much effort as I'm putting in my business. You should be putting that effort into my career music-wise. So I just feel like if I can sit up here and do all this pregnant, you can sit up here and book these studio time, and I should have, like, 10 songs out right now. There's no excuse. Being pregnant is not an excuse to not make music, to not do visuals. That's actually more of a reason to go harder. So that's just like how I am. Like I just, I could do so much in so little time. And I feel like if you don't have that faith in me, that that deteriorates me from you altogether. It really is hard to even tell people like just when, you know, because if you waste two hours, you already know, you know, you can't you got to really hustle and keep, you know, getting something significantly done. And I had that with one record producer. I'm not going to name him, but because I don't believe in doing that, but also just because you know, he did some good things. And then he also did a bunch of other things where it's just like, okay. Yeah. Like, you know how some people they come through when it's convenient for them, but then when you need them to come through, they're never there. I know exactly how that feels too. Oh, this one was bad. Cause like, he just would get extremely irritated the more I was telling him something needs to get done. And he was just like, can everyone just chill? I'm like, no, no, that's the equivalent of telling me to shut up. I'd much rather you say that to me as opposed to what you're doing here. We're just chill, chill. I'm like, I can't chill. Nothing is getting done. The client is wondering when his music video is getting done. And you're still here telling me it'll get done when it gets done. That's never an acceptable answer. Give me yeah, a date. I feel like people have to be productive. It's like if you're not productive, you know, you're wasting time. And that's just how I feel about it. Well, what's even stupider is I knew he was only doing it with this particular bunch. He could have just let me into his world for just like five seconds and said, I got five other clients. This is taking up way more time. and Or just, I don't know. Maybe branch it out a bit more saying, hmm, maybe we can do this next month or something. You know, don't, because when you're also overseeing the project, you kind of want the benefit of the doubt. You want people to be a little more blunt, but at the same time, you also just, you can't just be that loose with the time. You know, people want to know people who also participated in some way or getting curious they're going to promote on their own network and guess what you know they're going to ask you a million questions when is this coming out and if you don't know then you just got to estimate you know I'm predicting in the fall sometime you know something instead of yeah and that's important because when you start a project and you don't even have your release dates and then people are constantly questioning well, when is this going to be happening and what's next 
and you don't know what to say. And that's like, that's bad promotion. And it's just like, don't start on a project and start something and then not see it through or complete it because you want to put in half the work. It's like, no, if you're going to start something, you have to go all in from the very beginning because you don't know when you're going to have those opportunities again. So that's why I said when it's time for me to do my music, I like to knock out at least five to ten songs and at least about one or two sessions because I don't know when I'm going to have that time again to just sit in the studio. You know, time is always crucial for me. And, you know, I'm, I have a lot going on. I have children now. So I have to make sure that I'm doing things that is convenient for me or I can't do it at all. Only to just have all that just nonstop. Well, not sure. To be in a part of anybody's industry and leave my children behind for an opportunity. Like, I just, I can't do that. Like, if I don't have no one to watch my child or if I don't have, you know, the proper things and tools that I need, I'm not going to go on, you know, a long trip or, like, that's why I don't travel because it's like, my daughter needs me. I'm not going to go travel somewhere and leave my children with someone to go do something. If it's not, one, making me money, or two, if it's not something that's going to put me in a position to make myself win, I'm not going to go on someone else's platform and, you know, do something on their terms when I would rather it be done on my terms, you know? It's like, I'm not going to go and put my talent on the line to work with people that did not recognize me, or people that, you know, just not even putting their full effort in all into what I have going on. Like, if I do something has to be revolved around my music, or it has to revolve around my mind, and I have to be getting paid, like, up front before I even show up type of deal, because I just, with, the, with everything going on in the world, and so many people that's just scamming these young, you know, independent artists and people, influencers and models, I just can't be caught up in it. Broke up a little near the end, but I got your message. It's essentially, yeah, it, outlining goes a long way, and it really is amazing how some people just they just yes, we've had some talent do a bogus claim like, hey, I got a boyfriend or girlfriend issue, or yeah, someone's had an emergency. But it does get annoying when you try to tell them about any family thing, and it's like. It's not an emergency. It's legit. These are the logistics of it. it. It does make everyone wish that it could be just handled way better up front and just say, hey, I'm busy. You're busy. I'm good until this time. Let's get a lot of this done instead of try to cut corners or, you know, be too far away from home. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Like, I'm not going to travel, like, really, really far for any opportunity. With everything going on, it's just, like, it's really hard to do those things because you never know if you're even going to come back or if you're even going to get paid. Like, you know, I've just, I've taken risks in my career that, that taught me a lot about myself and about, you know, just taking, coming home and and leaving my home for granted. Like sometimes you don't know if you are gonna get the opportunity. There's a lot of weirdos in the industry. So you just have to be mindful of the opportunities that you do take and just don't ever be desperate for quick cash or, you know, for an opportunity because you never know how it's gonna play out. It may work out and it may not. And you have to be prepared for that, it may not. And you can't get discouraged. You just, you have to keep going. There's trials and errors in the industry. You have to have tough skin. You know, you can't get discouraged when people pass you up and you can't get discouraged when you're not moving nowhere. You know, sometimes you're going to be starting for a few years and then boom, it's your time. And then sometimes it might be your time and then you realize, okay, it's my time. So why am I not going further than where I need to go? Like sometimes it'll be your time for like a year and then things get slow and you, you don't know what's going on. But, you know, you just have to, if you really care, you just have to go with the motions. It's not... Like, what people don't understand is being an issue. It's not quick cash. It's not what people think it is. You don't just get signed to a model agency or a label and just make instant money. Like, people that are signed to big labels, they either put a lot of money down or they're just, or they just know the right people that got them those opportunities.
because I know some big labels you do have to pay them. You have to pay like some sort of fee to work with them up front because they have to invest into you and they want to be able to get that money back. And if they're not going to get it back with the music, they want the fee up front. Really? Because they're taking the risk on you. And some labels, like some major labels, don't want to take a risk on someone that doesn't have like the proper following base or that doesn't have like a lot of views on their videos. So they're like, they have to build you from the ground up. So I want my money up front just in case you don't go nowhere. And it's messed up for people to think like that, but that's how these labels are. Even now to model, like you have to pay an agent, I think like five hundred to a thousand dollars for them to book you. Like they want a booking fee as well because no one wants to see someone make money without benefiting off of it some kind of way. And that's just how the world works. They feel like if you're making money, they need to be making money too. So that's why yeah. I'm together independent. Like I will never just sign my life away like that. I have to make sure that everything that I do, all the effort that I put into myself, I'm making that many. No one will ever benefit off of what I put out there. I'm sorry, it just won't happen. Totally. It it gets even more just agitating when uh it just seems like, I mean, there are many who just feel like it just everything grows on trees. It's like, yeah, no, we wouldn't be working if that was the case. <laughs> yeah, like, you know, I feel like everybody should get paid for their time. You know, I feel like there's a lot of misconceptions and a lot of misunderstandings with the business. Like, you know, sometimes people want you to do something, so, and then you think that you're going to get and then when you get there, you realize, oh, shit, I'm not doing anything. So then you're like, fuck, that was fine. But now I got now I got out or I got this to lay my first Like, yeah, I can't be doing that shit. No one can. Yeah, you know, it's like, even though I'm not, like, famous or anything, I feel like if I'm going to be in the studio for hours on end and you know I'm writing music or I'm writing music for someone and I'm helping them put together a verse I should get paid for that you know it's like I feel like now when I go to the studio and when I make more music and I start dropping music I I am going to charge people for verses and I am going to charge for my time because I know my worth you know I know what I'm capable of yeah I only hope for the best at the end of the day. Uh, so do you have any other suggestions for uh, just others on how to avoid, you know, uh, finding these unpleasantries? <laughs> well, the only way you can avoid fighting them is just by, you know, overcoming them and just not paying attention to it. Like if you do happen to encounter one of these, you know, um, occasions, you just have to move wisely, and I just suggest that, you know, whatever you do, just remember that, you know, you're independent, and regardless if things work out or not, you're going to always get back up and try again. Mm -hmm. I'll and just say that. Just All I really have to say about that specific topic, and I appreciate you for, you know, letting me voice my opinion on that on your podcast today. Anytime, anytime, and you know, you gotta have some substance. It, you can only do so much of just talking here and there on this and that, but when there's a lot of specials and everyone's spending time actually uh, getting to understand one another and you know, the brain does open up and that's what many people could be spending way more time doing. and you know, don't don't let anyone even tease you about what you're listening to. If you are actually just learning just a very special story from what you're hearing, then, you know, you can't lose anything from that. And That's very true, you know. I think that um, your mind is very powerful. The more that you learn, the more successful that you can be. I feel like as long as you're smart, 
and you read, you know, and and you listen to successful like uh, seminars and stuff and watch motivational speeches and kind of listen to other people successful, you learn a lot, you know, of things. And, you know, I feel like sometimes people can just give you the idea and the wisdom and it's up to you to like move forward with it because, you know, a lot of people don't like to give out certain tools of the business for free you know like people write books and be like oh you have to pay for this knowledge because you know this is free game but I feel like I've always gave people information about things and I feel like it's like it's helpful to people to know those things but it's like all about if you're being taken advantage of and even if you are at least someone knows how to go about changing their lives or you know finding a new way to be successful even though they probably won't give you the credit or the recognition that you deserve they still use that information that you gave them and they took it wisely and they're doing really well so that's i can be grateful for is so that you can help other people who haven't completely started their independency journey you know or haven't started their model and career you can help them Get an idea of where to start, and once they start, it's up on to them to finish it out to see it through, you know. But at least they were able to listen to what you had to say to get from there. I can only hope to get from there. Yes, that's very true. Okay, well, if you would like to promote anything, how about it? Oh, yes. Um, I would love to promote uh, my YouTube channel, which is The Real Money by Mia. Go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'm going to be dropping new videos. I'm going to be doing vlogs with me and my daughter, and I'm going to be doing, like, cooking vlogs and makeup vlogs and stuff like that. Um, and, you guys, my website to my business is moneybagmia.shop, and my Instagram is Promiscuous Lips, so make sure you guys follow me. And check out my products and, you know, leave a review and subscribe to my website for promotion and updates on the, the business and the brand itself as a whole. Stellar, stellar. Alrighty. This is Soli. It's been a fun podcast. Peace out. We'll return after these messages. Hey, feeling down? Feeling low? Not enough podcasts about movies in your life? Why not try... They must be destroyed on sight! The new Podcast Cure-All. Sure to get you right with the world and on a path to better living. We have exploitation. We have Italian horror. We have zombies. We have slashers. We have crime films. We have spaghetti westerns. We even have sci-fi and sex comedies. So take a dose of... They must be destroyed on sight! as needed, and let the hosts, Lee Russell, Daniel Harper, Paul Romali, and the odd guest host, Cure What Ails Ya. Warning, may cause atrophy, African consumption, black fever, bone shave, chin puff, colic, cramp colic, dropsy of the brain, elephantitis, grocer's itch, jaundice, mania, miasma, mortification, palsy, pox disease, rheumatism, scurvy, St. Anthony's fire, summer complaint, and worm fit in some people. Consult a physician before listening. Did you ever see a film at such a young age it left you traumatized with cinematic wounds? Oh, necrophilia. Oh, oh, oh. It's a dead issue, man. Don't, don't push it. Cinema PsyOps is a weekly podcast documenting an ongoing experiment on the mind of an unwilling test subject. No one should have to watch this movie. Oh, no one should have to watch this. No one should have to watch this movie. Surprisingly, it's not a topic that a lot of people really want to tackle. I'm shocked, Prudes. I know, really. Right? It's the next sexual frontier that no one wants to explore. I am, in the most sincerest of senses, disappointed in it. It takes a powerful goddess like Connie, jam her arm down the monster's throat and kill it. I'm still tripping out over that. Even as a kid, I was like, I gotta find a girl like that. Every week, I, I get a new look of disappointment that I never thought I could get it's out of here. unimaginable. At 12 years old, you should not be watching this movie. Obviously. At 13, you should not be. 14, you shouldn't be. I'm not entirely sure even 17-year-olds should be watching this movie. Just because you're offended by something doesn't mean that you have the right to demand that it doesn't exist. Watching this film again, I had all of this, like, little nerd glee with everything Dude, that kept Little history up. doll yeah, popping up absolutely. at you. So I totally loved this film. 
hey, I know why you, you know, couldn't see that. It's because your brain's warped from watching this shit at 12 years old. Yeah, this is this is a rough movie. I told you ahead of time when we were getting ready to do it that it was How did you watch movie. this shit at 12? Because physical wounds heal, cinematic ones don't. Listen to Cinema Psyops. Hey everybody, I'm Corey. And I'm Zach. And we're the hosts of Podcasting After Dark, a cast dedicated to late night horror and sci-fi of the 80s and 90s, often found on HBO and Cinemax. You know, the movies your parents didn't want you watching as a kid. You can find us every other week on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Podbean, and Stitcher. This is what you want. This is what you get. It's time, let's check our cue, baby. Pair it with a couple brews, baby. We love good movies. We love the bad ones, too. So we watch them all and pass their lessons on to you. Oh, yeah. Everything I learned from movies Helps to make life a little bit groovy With a one life's plot holes and gratuitous boobies It's time to get busy With your friend Steve and Izzy At eilfm.podbean.com Welcome to Who Was She Podcast. I am your host, Tara Jabari. After a decade working in documentaries, marketing, and all things digital media, I found that podcasting is a strong medium to share stories. After years of producing for others, I decided to start my own biographical podcast. Who Was She will focus on the life of a woman throughout Baha'i history. The first season is about Lydia Zeminoff. Lydia's story explores the subjects of the power of language and faith. Her father invented the universal language Esperanto, and she came from a Jewish family and became a Baha'i. She grew up during World War I and was killed during World War II in a concentration camp, despite heroic efforts to save her life. How can one person's life intersect with so many others? connect across borders, and inspire a biography which inspired this podcast. Over the next few weeks, I will share her story with you and the lives that were most affected by her and those who affected her life as well. They include her father, Ludwig Semenov, her spiritual mother, American journalist Martha Root, and the Baha'i German soldier Fritz Mako, who worked for the resistance undercover while having to serve the Nazi party. I want to thank the author Wendy Heller and George Ronald Publishing for their blessing to let me use Heller's biography, Lydia, The Life of Lydia Zeminoff, Daughter of Esperanto, as a main and instrumental resource for this podcast. So please subscribe and learn about this amazing woman, who traveled through three continents in an effort to bring unity through the power of language. You can also find more information on our Instagram, Facebook, and Pinterest at Who Was She Podcast. Music was composed and performed by Sam Red. I am your host, Tara Jabari. Join us next time as we begin our journey about Lydia Zeminoff. Are you sick of the same old stale podcasts? Well, then join Vanessa and Darren as they dissect movies of all kinds. The two lifelong cinema lovers bring their favorites, curiosities, and first-time watches to the operating table and inject them with a healthy dose of snark. Then there's the waiting room where they examine books and short stories. So just look for them on Apple Podcasts and where fine podcasts are available. They're part of the Legion Podcast Network. Follow them on Twitter at VD Clinic Pod. Join them on Facebook at facebook.com slash groups slash VD Clinic Pod. Or email them at vdclinicpod at gmail.com.
They're ready to cure what ails you. <laughs> and still, they just might be a little contagious. Hi there. It's Heather from the Watching Netflix Without You podcast. Did you know that there are over 1,200 Netflix original feature films and documentaries? And that number is only growing. So I've made it my mission to watch as many as I possibly can. Then, with a delightful guest or guests, disclaimer, more often than not my brother Ryan, we spend an episode rating, reviewing, and discussing a film at length. The first half of every episode is spoiler-free for those who haven't seen it yet, and in the second half, after a very clear spoiler warning, we dive into it. And that's really about it. You can listen to Watching Netflix Without You on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and more. We now continue with our program. Follow us on the web on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. The podcast is available on Podbean, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Anchor, Apple, and anywhere else podcasts are available. Feel free to review our show and leave comments on any of those sites. Thanks a million for listening. It's a jacked up.